Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to look at two typewriters in my collection, my remaining collection of typewriters. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, this is the Smith Corona Silent Super. And this is the Royal Quiet Deluxe. Stay tuned. So some of you might be aware that recently I've made the decision to bring a little bit more sanity into my typewriter collecting and how typewriters fit into my larger life here at home. And one of those decisions was basically to downsize my collection to the more essential uh, typewriters that really are important to me for a number of different reasons. It was about a week ago that we had a our monthly meeting of the Albuquerque Typewriter Society and during that meeting I was able to gift some typewriters to some other members of our society. But the remaining typewriters in my collection include these medium-sized portable machines and I would say these two particularly are quite um, crucial to my writing world, the world of uh, private writing, the kind of writing I like to do uh, by myself uh, that maybe I don't share with anybody. It's just part of being a creative person. One of those machines, of course, is the Smith Corona Silent Super. This is what I sort of haven't really come up with a good name for, uh, but it is my beat typewriter. And what I mean by that is it started out its life in my possession in a very dirty, bad shape. And so after working on this machine over the period of a couple years and getting all the problems ironed out, mainly to do with cleaning and some adjustments, uh, and now I've recently replaced uh, the rubber platen roller has been resurfaced along with the feed rollers and the paper bale rollers. So all fresh rubber in this machine. It's pretty darn nice. And it's very indicative of uh, mid-1950s Smith Corona machines, the 5 Series, so-called. And then the Royal Quiet Deluxe, it's also mid-1950s vintage. This is Adobe Rose. I haven't used Adobe Rose actually in, in quite a few months, but I had an opportunity yesterday. And so I have some thoughts about both machines, having used both of them in one day. Both of these machines are medium-sized portable typewriters, uh, meaning, yeah, you can carry them different places. They're not the most portable typewriter. They're not ultra-portable. Um, you might think of these as luggable in the same way that if you're familiar with the early history of the personal computer, you might know about those Osborne and other kinds of uh, luggable luggage suitcase kind of portable computers, that's what these are, right? You could carry these from your car to the coffee shop or whatever, but you wouldn't want to carry them over a mountain, perhaps. Now, with that being said, um, in its case, the Royal Quiet Deluxe here is about 15 pounds in weight, and in its case, the Smith Corona Silent Super is about 17 pounds with the Holiday case. So the Silent Super, is a little bit heavier of a machine. The two cases empty weigh pretty much the same here, just testing them out. So a little bit heavier machine, but overall, in terms of width and height and size in general, they're very, very similar. Uh, as far as styling, well, the Smith Corona has a few more rounded curves to it. The uh, Royal is a little more angular in shape, but the Royal, I believe, came in a wider variety of colors. There were of course, the grays and browns and dark greens and the light blue and the pink, I think, maybe in the Smith Corona line. But there was a, quite a few more colors available here. Okay, let's talk about age. Uh, so if you reference Ted Monk's typewriter database, which everybody should visit, by the way, this is a 1955 vintage Smith Corona Silent Super, and this is a 1956 vintage uh, Royal Quiet Deluxe. So the Silent Super was kind of the top of the line in the medium-sized portables for Smith Corona. The Quiet Deluxe was kind of the equivalent, I think, for Royal. So it's an interesting comparison. Well, first of all, the first thing I notice on this machine is uh, the keyboard, so the uh, Silent Super does not have the number one key in this year, whereas the Royal already had the number one and the exclamation mark, and also the equals and the plus, which is uh, missing on the Silent Super. 
which is interesting, right? As far as the tabulator system, the Royal Quiet Deluxe uses these movable slugs on the uh, bar back here that you can press and slide. They kind of act like margin settings on other kinds of machines, and so there are six of them. So there are, they are movable uh, tab slugs that are kind of fixed in the sense that they're not the little removable metal things, they just slide. So you can't lose them, but there's only six tabs. Whereas the Silent Super has a full set clear for the entire carriage. So it's a key set tabulator type system for the Silent Super. Both machines, I noticed, having used both of them on the same day, both machines have the backspace key on the left side. I just find the backspace on the left is very intuitive for me, maybe because it's on the left, which is the direction that you would want to go for moving your print position backwards. Maybe it's just sort of a mental thing, an intuitive thing. The Quiet Deluxe, though, has the word backspace printed on the key, whereas the Smith Chrono just uses the back arrow. One thing you'll notice about the Royals keyboard is because it does have the extra one key here on the left, there is a pretty close clearance between that and the backspace key. Tabs are both on the upper right corner of the keyboard, very similar. And also the tab key on the right is definitely elevated higher than the rest of the keys on the back row. The uh, bichrome setting is also on the upper right corner of the front of the machine. And it's interesting here, the Smith Corona has it black, stencil red, uh, top to bottom, and the Royal has it red, black, stencil. So a little bit different order in terms of how the machine works. The Silent Super has a wider space bar. The Royals is narrower. The Silent Supers, though, the space bar kind of sits flush with the frame of the machine, whereas the Royal, the space bar, sits above the frame of the machine. And you have more space here, more frame around either side of the space bar. And it seems like, yeah, they probably could have made a wider space bar. The ribbon cover <clears throat> on the Smith Chrono course, it just pops up. You pull it and pop it up. On the Royal, you push the button like that and it releases it. When you do open up the ribbon cover, however, you'll see that on both machines, the touch control is in the left side here. Both machines are segment shift, which is nice. What's interesting about the difference in the mechanisms is on the Silent Super, if you shift the mechanism, just shifting it, it advances the ribbon spools, which is something I never noticed before. Whereas on the Royal, it doesn't advance the ribbon spools just by shifting. The Smith Corona has these two metal fingers for supporting a business card, for typing on a business card. And its ribbon threading system is a little bit more like the traditional older Coronas. Whereas on the Royal, it has these flip-in levers here that give you a quick way to release the ribbon. The ribbon changing is much quicker on the Royal. The Royal also has this flip-up card support lever that helps you secure a business card right behind the print position for easy typing. Okay, let's look at another difference between these machines is the carriage return levers. So the Smith Corona is obviously is longer and extends almost to the front of the ribbon cover, whereas the uh, Royals it only goes about halfway over to the ribbon cover. But I didn't find the Royals that particularly that difficult to use or to reach. Um, they both sit at about the same angle, roughly. None of them stick way up like a Hermes 3000 might stick way up. So very similar in that regard. So here on the Smith Corona, the uh, line spacing selector goes from one, two, three, from front to back. Whereas on the Royal Quiet Deluxe, the selector goes from three, two, one, front to back. The Smith Corona has the more traditional push and slide style of margin settings. Whereas the Royal has their trademarked magic margin, which is you push the button and move the carriage and the margin set moves with it. Here you can see the paper bale on the Smith Corona has three rubber rollers, whereas on the Royal there's only two rollers. 
This vintage of Silent Super retains the old Corona style paper fingers on both the left and right side, but it also has the end of paper system, the indicator system here with this metal band and the indicators. Whereas the Royal Quiet Deluxe also has an end of paper system, very similar to the Smith Coronas. And its paper bale has a scale marking, whereas the Smith Coronas doesn't. At this point, you may notice also there's no soundproofing on the inside of the ribbon cover nor on the side of the body panels back in here. Whereas the Silent Super has sound insulation on both the ribbon cover and on the side panels. Both machines give you the ability to manually reverse the ribbon. The Royals manual ribbon reversing lever is underneath the ribbon cover behind the touch selector, whereas the Silent Supers lever is actually on the keyboard area itself, so you could actually close the ribbon cover and still gain access to the manual reversing. So one of the things I noticed on the Smith Corona is the way the keycaps articulate when you're typing. It starts out, of course, horizontal, but as it travels down, the keycap stays horizontal. There's a special extra set of linkages in here that do that, but it causes the keycap to make a kind of an arc shape. So it starts here and it kind of goes backwards and then it moves back forward. So it's kind of making an arc shape as it's moving in its travel, but the keycap is staying flat. Whereas on the Royal, of course, it starts out a horizontal, but as you travel on the keycap, it tilts downward, but it kind of does so in sort of an arc shape. The fingertip on your hand as you are typing, it makes an arc shape like this, and the Smith Corona linkage more closely follows that arc shape of your fingertip, whereas in the case of the Royal, it's actually moving in an opposite arc. Your finger makes an arc like this, while well, the keycap is making an arc opposite ways. It may not be quite as uh, ergonomic or comfortable, but nevertheless, I find both machines to be easy to type on. Since we're comparing keyboards, let's measure the width of the keyboard. So I'm gonna go from the left side of the A key to the left side of the ampersand key, and that measures seven and five eighths inches. Whereas with the Royal, it is seven and a half inches. So the Royal's keyboard is about an eighth of an inch narrower than the Smith Corona's. However, looking at both keyboards side by side, it appears to me that, well, first of all, the Royals keyboard, the bottom row or the front row starts lower to the table surface uh, than the uh, Smith Coronas. The Smith Coronas is almost a half an inch higher relative to the table. So looking at the right side of the machines, starting with the Smith Corona, of course you have the carriage release lever, you have the pressure feed roller release lever, and then you have the paper bale has a little finger sticking up. Now my machine on the Smith Corona here, the little finger is broken off, but this paper bale has a three positions. There is the uh, rest position against the platen. There is a forward position, it'll pull forward, and then there is a flip up position that flips to the back. On the Royal, uh, you have very similar adjustments. Of course, you have the right platen knob, you have the carriage release lever, you have the magic margin setting button, and you have the feed roller pressure release lever here, and of course the paper bale has a nice big finger, and it also has three positions. There is the middle position where it's resting against the platen, there is a pull forward position which is very convenient, and there is a flip up position. I find on this paper bale the pull forward is very easy to do because of the large lever, but it's a little more difficult getting your finger underneath to flip it up because it does sit fairly close to the platen here. Now here's one of the more arcane measurements comparing two typewriters, and that is if you have a beverage glass sitting next to the typewriter, which one, which machine gives you more clearance? So the Smith Coronas is the lower of the two, and you barely get two inches of clearance below the bottom of the carriage, whereas on the Royal, below the bearing race here, you get close to actually over two and a half inches. So you can have a slightly taller beverage glass uh, next to the Royal and it's not gonna knock it over as easily. 
Now, one of the other significant differences between the two machines, though, is servicing the machine, especially getting the platen out. The Smith Corona Silent Super was designed for the operator to clean behind the platen roller. So basically, you want to push the paper fingers all the way out to the edge, lift up the paper bale, flip back the rear panel, and then pull out the variable clutch on the left knob, like that, and then there is a lever right here that you push backward and lift up and the platen roller you pull out toward the right and it can be removed completely and that gives you access to clean the feed rollers uh, and to clean behind the card guide if you might get any grunge or white out or whatever there so self-servicing uh, self-cleaning platen now speaking about haptics you'll notice the smith corona has a larger platen knob than the Royal, but the Royal has some knurling or grooves on the side of the knob, whereas the Smith Coronas is smoother. Uh, also, the carriage release lever on the Smith Corona is definitely bigger and uh, makes it just a better purchase for your fingers, easier to grab, whereas the Royals is a smaller carriage release lever and you're more apt to probably miss it unless you get used to the exact position where it's located. So speaking about subtle differences between machines, you might notice that when you press the space bar on the Smith Corona, the carriage moves right as the space bar nears its the lower limit of its travel. Whereas for the Royal, the carriage doesn't move until the space bar is released. And similarly, when you are typing a character, as the type slug on the Smith Corona nears the print position, the carriage moves before the printing happens. Whereas on the Royal, the printing happens first, and then as the key is released, the carriage moves afterwards. So the question is, is there any preference toward the timing of the carriage movement, in this case of the Smith Corona before the printing happens? or in the case of the Royal, after the printing happens? Well, that's a good question. I think uh, if both mechanisms are operating properly, have been properly serviced and adjusted, it probably doesn't really matter. But in the case of the Smith Corona, the problem is if the escapement trips a little too late, then the carriage could still be moving when the printing happens, and that could cause smearing of the letters. Whereas it would be more difficult, I think, to, to imagine the royal timing such that the carriage is actually released to move uh, sooner than later. Usually when things bind up, things happen slower rather than quicker. So it's less likely that the royal would actually cause a smearing of characters by the carriage still moving when the printing has happened, since in this case, the carriage doesn't move until after the printing happens. It's a really difficult question to answer as to which machine I prefer or which is a better machine. One of the things I first noticed about the royal is because the back row of keys is much, much closer to the, the front of the ribbon cover, and the ribbon cover sticks up higher above the back row than it does on the Smith Corona. If you're doing kind of a hunt and peck style, like kind of the way I like to do, with your fingers sticking out, they're more likely to hit this back panel, I notice, than with the uh, Smith Corona. I have a long history with this machine because I bought it in a really grungy condition from a, a local seller, and it took me a number of months, probably over a year of working on it intermittently to get the last of the nagging problems fixed on it. And during the process of working on it, I did an awful lot of test typing on rolls of paper. And because these are both elite or 12 character per inch machines, but this one in particular, single spaced 12 characters per inch on a roll of paper, I first discovered with this machine in the, in the repair process of it, this stream of consciousness style of writing. And I would work on this machine late at night out of my garage, tinker with it, and then start doing these test typings to try to get these intermittent skipping problems to show up. And in the process of doing that, I wasn't just writing the quick brown fox. I started 
just stream of consciousness kind of writing other stuff and it, it was really an interesting process but this machine I have a lot of special feelings for because of that and now giving it all new rubber it really has a new lease on life. On the other hand Adobe Rose is a beautiful typewriter color wise probably prettier than this but you can't argue with the dark green and gray it's a good color scheme also. Uh, this was a gift to me uh, by David who teaches up in Colorado but he comes down to Santa Fe in the summer wonderful machine. They're both great machines. They both have a lot of similarities as you've seen and they also have differences. Only a year apart in manufacture. Mid-1950s. I was born in 57 so I'm roughly the same vintage as these are. So I think uh, it's hard to pick between both of them so I'm just going to keep them both. That's kind of my quick overview of both of these machines. Classic mid-1950s medium-sized portable writing machines. You can lug them around. They're not as portable as an ultra-portable, but they're certainly totable, and they are very practical and will do you well. And I hope that these two machines will continue to become the core of my newly revised typewriter collection. Well, that's not all though. I have other machines in my collection that we'll talk about and do some comparisons and why it was that I chose to keep certain machines like, for instance, these two. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave comments down below if you're interested in anything, any further details about the machines or the comparisons or whatever. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to have a dialogue with you. But until next time, stay creative, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.